Okay, uh, let's start this session. Uh, we are continuing uh, uh, network design, and in particular, we are talking more about oblivious routing here. And if you remember, uh, like oblivious routing in uh, particular was uh, important because oblivious routing was the way to design uh, and oblivious routing essentially was the way to design this kind of uh, tree problems or like uh, probabilistic embedding into trees for cut problems. And it is very related to this other concept of incremental solutions, universal or other oblivious solutions. But uh, again, uh, so we will talk about oblivious routing and in particular a decomposition tree. And then just one decomposition tree and embedding into some probabilistic trees that we are talking about. And then uh, we go from there uh, to probabilistic embedding into trees for cut problems. And we talk about how you can solve bisection using embedding into trees. And this was actually a very hard problem. There was the previous algorithm, like there was ligand to the two, uh, I think, or poly like in general by Unify gate. It was a very complicated algorithm. But here you see that how easy we can solve this problem if we are just using probabilistic embedding into trees for cut problems, connectivity problem we talked before. Okay, so uh, let's talk about oblivious routing. Uh, as we mentioned before, so for any S1, T1, uh, S2, T2, and so on, for any pairs, like in choose two pairs, uh, you are uh, maybe actually in two times that because you can say from S to T and from T to S. We are deciding about if you want to send one unit of flow, how do you send through this? Maybe one half here, one fourth here, and one fourth here. And in the oblivious routing, as we discussed, we have uh, this one, uh, SITI, and finally the demand DI. And then uh, these DIs, if you want to route it, this one, it would be DI, so for example, D1 times one fourth, D1 times one fourth and D1 over one half. So this, if you, so we are doing for one unit of flow in the oblivious routing, but when you have the demand DI, you just multiply DI times that routes that we have mentioned, and this is the case. And what was the objective uh, function? The one that we try to consider, this is the uh, concurrent multi-community flow. We try to minimize congestion. And again, what is congestion? Congestion is the uh, total traffic. Um, total traffic through an edge. Through an edge. Divided by the capacity of the edge. And this is the definition of congestion that we discussed uh, previous times. So uh, what is the goal is that, the goal in the oblivious routing that we decide about this path between SITI for all possible pairs in advance. Now you are coming and give, give me some of these demands with the sum of this, with some DIs. I will route these DIs through this path. These are like predetermined path. And I will say that now I can compute the congestion of the, an edge by just say how much traffic goes through this edge over the capacity of the edge. Now, uh, in the oblivious, of course, you can also optimize the, you can write an LP 
to route, to find the route. This is kind of flow LP, such that you minimize this congestion parameter that they have mentioned. So you can write an LP for this particular instance and see what is the congestion. And I can get some congestion using my predetermined path. And the whole concept of oblivious routing that these two are very close to each other, generally poly-like factor of each other, and in the latest version, essentially, are just O tilde log n of each other. So essentially, I can just compute this one in advance. And this, as I mentioned, especially, for example, in the network, uh, in the internet, it, or network routing is very important because this kind of, if you know this kind of predetermined path, then you can send it through this path. And you know that independent of how is it going with the network, always you have some kinds of guarantee that the congestion would be comparable to the optimal solution. So that's essentially a great result. And then uh, uh, to get this one, this is the concept of decomposition trees that we want to talk more about it in this session. Again, so this is the things, this is the congestion of an edge. We want to find essentially some kind of oblivious routing that over all demand matrix D or congestion, congestion of oblivious compared to congestion of op for that instance are comparable. And here is the one that we have it here essentially for their login, we can get it actually. Um, by Rakia stock 2008. And uh, this was for undirected graph that we mentioned it, but for uh, directed graph, that's the thing that we discussed previous time. Even for single source case, you cannot get anything better than a scalar root of n. And we talk about the random instances if these demands are somehow chosen independently from random. In directed graph can help because you can get poly like, but for undirected graph, maybe by at most like like again, even that we don't know. Good. This is the example that we discussed before. Uh, good. Now, uh, this is the one that we want to talk about the decomposition tree. So, this decomposition tree first was introduced by Rake. Good. So this concept of 3D composition. The 3D composition first introduced by uh, Good. So uh, just so far, we just discussed about oblivious routing, a recap from the previous session. And now we are talking about the 3D composition. I mentioned that this, uh, this kind of oblivious routing first obtained through 3D composition. And then this concept later went to probabilistic embedding into trees for cut problem, which are very useful. So uh, what is uh, like 3D composition first introduced by Rake in Fox 2002, and that's the paper that got best paper award station. So here the idea is that we want to find essentially a tree. In the what if we want to do it in Barthol or FRT? We try to keep essentially the distances. So this is the graph G. We wanted to make sure that the distances between S and T here and between S and T in this tree, they are somehow comparable. Here, instead, we try to, uh, we don't want to do that. We try to essentially approximate the cut structure of the graph. So we want to somehow represent the whole graph with a tree, and we want to represent the cut structure. So what is the input graph? The input graph is the graph G is given n vertices. And then we have a capacity function C on edges. And this is the, this, because the graph is undirected, this is very important. The capacity of UV and the VU are the same essentially. And we are assuming that the, the capacity is greater than zero if there's an edge between them and zero otherwise. So if there's no edge, just put the capacity zero between. Them. 
Good. So what is the, uh, essentially a decomposition tree? Let me just bring this one. FRT or Bartal, a decomposition for this is a rooted tree T. Then we have, of course, the V of T, the vertex of T, and E of T. Now, we discussed at uh, originally regarding the FRT as well or Bartal. If you remember, when we try to uh, create essentially FRT, the way that we created is that we may have some Steiner points. Because any time that we were cutting the graph, for example, in FRT, we had one vertex corresponding to this part that we are doing that. So we had some kind of laminar families. So when we cut it the second time, so this is A, this is B, then we have one vertex A, then we have one vertex B, and then we continue this. So even in FRT or Bartal, at the end of the day, the vertices at the end were corresponding to the leaf. So this is V1, V2 to Vn. Exactly the same thing here. We have V1, V2, V3, I don't know, Vn. So uh, in that sense, these are very similar to that. This is the same tree. In the, if you remember, we mentioned that by result of uh, Anupam Gupta, actually we can remove uh, these Steiner points. And at the end, we have some tree only on the uh, vertices of the graph. And the distances go at most by a factor eight up. The distortion goes by a factor eight. So here we need to discuss that one. It is not that, uh, I mean, uh, simple to remove these ones. Still, we can remove them somehow, but we will talk more about it. So here we have these things that these vertices V1, V2, Vn are the leaves. So all the vertices of the original graph are the leaves. And not only that, these other vertices in the graph, so here we, these kind of vertices was corresponding to some kind of clusters that we had it here. Here for each of these vertices, so this vertex, again, it might go to another vertex V1. So in some sense, V1 has a corresponding vertex here and another corresponding vertex V. So all uh, edges, all vertices in the tree, they have a corresponding vertices on G. So this is the mapping MV. Then we have another mapping ME that maps an edge UT to VT. So uh, this is the map from this vertex to this vertex. This maps this guy to a path in the graph. So this one is corresponding to V1, this other one corresponding to say V3. And there is a path in the graph between them. So this edge will be mapped actually through this path in G. And this is the function ME that we have. So uh, between any two vertices here, then so essentially between any, any edge here has a corresponding path here. And any vertex in the tree T has a corresponding vertex here. So in some sense, uh, it is not a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, each uh, vertex G, I mean, has a one-to-one -one mapping to the leaves, but the other vertices also, they map, map, map to some of the other vertices of some vertices of the tree inside may also map to the same vertex of G. And so we have this, as I mentioned, MV and ME is that for each vertex, for each vertex of the tree, what is the corresponding vertex in the graph? And what is the corresponding path? Let me go down. Oh, 
Okay, so we have some kind of the reverse ones as well. Uh, let me just do that. So, uh, okay. Now, we have this kind of uh, M prime V that maps nodes in the graph to the list of three. So uh, like essentially any node here, so this is, we have essentially MV and ME here. And then from here to here, we have M prime V and M prime V. So this maps any the vertices here to the leaves of this tree. And here, again, ME of this, that maps any edge here in this graph will be mapped to, so essentially, again, don't know, between V3 and VN. So this is an edge here. It will be mapped to the unique shortest path, essentially, between V3 and VN here. So in some sense, MV maps essentially from the trees to G and M prime maps from G to B. Now, uh, whenever you want to go from, uh, so now we are considering multi-commodity flow. Multi-commodity flow, as I mentioned, this is some essentially some SI to TI with some demand DI. So whenever there is a uh, there is a flow on graph G, you want to map it into T. You are just using M prime V and M prime E because that exactly says that for each edge, if there is something, just go and use the corresponding path. Similarly, here if you have some multi-commodity flow here between uh, any two vertices between any two vertices in three, you can also map it now using M V and M E. So these functions are essentially the case that you can map them from one way to another. Now, this is the most important things here. What is the, so we knew the capacity of an edge. So here is C is the capacity of edge. What is the capacity of an edge in this tree? This is the super important thing. The capacity of an edge here on the tree, which is very important. The capacity of each edge. So each edge in the tree, when you cut it, it will partition two sets of leaves essentially. Now, uh, partition, so these internal vertices you ignore for now, or we ignore for now, just see that the leaves will be partitioned into two sets. Say in this case, uh, this is this part of the things and this is the other part of it, the rest of it. What is the cut size? What is the sum of the, so this is the sum of capacities. So this is sum of So some of the capacities of the edges that they are running between these two part, essentially two sets of the partition. So whenever you want to find what is the capacity of an edge in the tree T, you just remove that edge. You see that we have partitioned the vertices into two sets. And these two sets, what is the total uh, sum of the capacities between uh, these people? That actually is the one that uh, would be corresponding to, uh, that's the one that would be corresponding to this, uh, 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 like uh, three that, uh, like these capacities that we are considering. So just find, find essentially the capacities between these two, um, that the, some of the cut edges between these two, and that would be the, um, essentially the capacity of this edge on the tree T. Good. So we have defined it and this is now we have a mapping from G to T and from T to G and these are like the, you can map the flows 
back and forth and everything we can do it and we know what is the capacity of it. Uh, now, uh, one thing that I, we want to prove first is this one. Is that, let me just uh, delete some of this. Um, um, good. Uh, so, uh, so that's essentially the one that we are defining it here. Good. Now, uh, this is the important one. This is the theorem one. Suppose you are given a multi-community flow F in G with congestion CG. Then, so uh, as I mentioned, a, a multi community flow again between some SITI pairs, there is uh, some path that uh, essentially it is there, and this, you are sending this flow through these things. Then uh, you have a corresponding multi community flow on T between the set of leaves. So you are given a, a essentially multi community flow F in G with congestion CG. Then the flow M prime F obtained by the mapping of F to some decomposition tree T results in a flow in T that has congestion at most the same thing that you had it before. So what's the meaning of that? It means that if you, this is a, 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 this is a multi commodity flow that you have it here. If you consider this flow, and again, you may send essentially here in G in multiple paths. That is totally fine. Uh, just cause, I mean, <clears throat> for I mean, of course, here in the tree they will go to the root the same things, uh, not completely to the same thing because each edge will be mapped to a path essentially in the tree. So. Uh, any uh, multi commodity flow that you have it in G, you have a corresponding thing on T. And why the congestion in T would be less than or equal to CG? Because of this definition of the capacities. Why? Essentially, uh, consider any edge in the tree. So any edge in the tree, I mean, that uh, this, this guy has an ET. Uh, I mean, what is the congestion? Congestion on the tree is that you are considering the flow that is going to lose this, the total flow that goes to lose this ET. And now, uh, you can uh, see that. So in any edge that you are considering in this tree, all travel, uh, so all edges that are traversing through this edge are those essentially, um, so you have some flow here, but what are these flows? These flows are exactly the one that if you have a cut here between the vert this, this vertex set here and the remaining vertex set in the tree, these are all flow that are going through this ET. So in some sense, uh, what is the flow on each edge or the traffic that goes from part of this, the first half of this partition to the second half? So, uh, and this, I mean, now you are, if you take just simple averaging, you know that at least on one of these edge, so in some sense, we know that this is the, the congestion. So this is the total traffic over the capacity of this edge. And note that the capacity of this edge is the sum of the, so the capacity of this edge, again, some of the capacities in the original graph of the edges that are running between these two sets. So whenever you consider this one, you know that there are these two sets and the, mm, uh, here. Uh, so the, again, the capacity of this, uh, the capacity of this edge would be some of these capacities. So that would be say C1, C2, C3. So what is the capacity of this edge? C of ET is equal to C1 plus C2. Now, you have some total traffic that goes through this one and with this capacity. So you can just take essentially a simple averaging and know that the traffic that goes through this should be at most the, um, so the traffic that goes through this edge would be at most the uh, traffic of an individual edge in the graph. So that's essentially come from this fact 
that uh, if you are doing uh, uh, these things, the total capacity would be at most the total capacity of those uh, ages there. And uh, just by the way, one other thing that you can think about is so uh, you can always, I mean, if you want, you can simplify the proof. You can do this, this kind of cancellation of the flow. For example, if you are going from this part of the tree to this node, and then from this node, you are going to this. So there is no need to go to all the way here. You can just go here and then from here. So you can do this cal cancellation of flow, essentially. If you go back and then come back, so you can just remove it and then just make it simpler. So this can make some of the proofs essentially uh, simpler. Uh, however, this issue will be not any issue in the next version that I want, the next uh, version of this problem that I want to talk or next version of this decomposition tree that I want. So so far, what do we know? We uh, this is this is what is this theorem? What this is some kind of domination. So this is a domination property that we have seen before for Barton. That any. Uh, uh, traffic there we had the, the distances on the tree would be larger than the distances on the graph. Here uh, we have the same thing. The congestion somehow on the tree would be less than the congestion on the graph, and uh, like why? Because of uh, these capacities that we are putting. So. Note that uh, there is a, 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 why do we define this one? So uh, let me define another version of decomposition theory, which is simpler. So here, as we discussed, you might have this kind of points, which are Steiner points. You can actually have the same thing. We discussed about the removing a Steiner points at Bartal or FRT. And here also you can have it. You can actually have that this graph that you obtain, this 3T, on, on the same set of vertices. So here we mentioned that this tree actually just the leaves there. Actually, we can make sure that this is the same set of leaves here. And not the same, same set of vertices. Not only that, all these edges that you have it here also are the edges in the original graph. So these are the subgraphs. So this is the uh, subtree of uh, original. Good. So uh, this decomposition, the first one that uh, actually uh, Raki obtained in 2000, uh, Fox 2002, that has a Steiner points. And this Steiner point, as I mentioned, they may map actually to the original vertices. However, in stock 2008, He's actually simplifying this to some extent that we talk. And there uh, you can uh, have this property that, and then you can actually, uh, there is this um, kind of duality that goes between this one and the Bartal, as you will see, this is the work that is done by Feige. Here we can say even more than that, uh, that, these trees that we have here. So here it is just some tree with some Steiner rods. Here we can say even these trees that we have are just uh, essentially subtrees of the original graph. And in but so this may change. So you may remove Steiner points and you may have the edges are corresponding to the edges in the graph. But one thing that does not change is again the same thing. What is the capacity of an edge here? The capacity of an edge here. Uh, I mean, in this, even in this spanning trees, so the capacity of an edge uh, here, again, the same things. So whenever you want to see what is the capacity of an edge, whenever you delete this edge, you have this partition and this partition of the graph. Say, what is that? Uh, what is that set of uh, like here? A different color. So here you will see what are the set of edges in between. Again, like uh, C1, C2, C3. And then what is the capacity of this edge would be C1 plus C2 plus C3. 
So always it is the case that the capacity of the edge in the tree, you want to get it, just delete this edge. It partition the vertices into two sets. Here in the original tree, you partition, I mean, you will ignore essentially these internal guys and everything would be essentially on the leaves. Here, if it is a subtree, this is, I mean, essentially a subtree. You will remove it and then you have two sets of uh, vertices. And then you will say, what is the sum of the cuts essentially here? And then some of this, uh, some of the capacities of the edges in the cut, and that would be the capacity of this edge. So that is always the same. So now uh, I wanted, so this paper, this one essentially was uh, uh, Fox 02 that got best paper award. This other one was Stock 08 that again got best paper award. And this stack 08. Uh, so the original way that uh, I mean Rake created both of them by Rake. And the first one, it was so complicated. And as I mentioned, the people believe that I mean, maybe this is, I mean, there might be some bugs because you can get one tree and you can simulate essentially all cuts in it. Because in some sense, this tree simulates all the cuts or keep the structure of all the cuts in the graph. Having one tree to have it, it was, I mean, almost. Like a very, it was very surprising. Then this other one, and it was very complicated. This one, the original one, I think it, he had it log n to the four or something, log n three or log n four. It was very complicated to construct it. This is like 2008, essentially simplified the problem a lot and said that this is essentially just a Bartal. So these trees are the Bartals, essentially. And uh, Feige comes and show even more explicitly that these trees are exactly just the trees. Uh, just This is just essentially dual of, uh, this is the concept of duality or which is corresponding to min max essentially of uh, um, the Bartal. And this is the whole idea. So here, this is mainly sort of Feige using this fact that distance is one over capacity. So which is a very natural thing. So whenever you have a high distance between two vertices, essentially means that, I mean, the capacity between these guys, uh, so it should be uh, very low. This is the main essentially uh, things which is used here uh, to get the uh, idea. So distance is essentially one over capacity. Uh, good. So uh, this is the thing. Now, uh, there is something that I need to say before finishing this. So, uh, we were, uh, okay, so we have this one and the bonds here were worse. But, uh, and here, this is a subtree, but here is not a subtree. So it is, uh, so here is subtree. But this is not a subtree necessarily. And can we say that this uh, this one, this later result actually dominates the first one? It is not completely correct. And what is the reason for that? The main reason for this is that, that uh, here, how this is a subtree and this is not a subtree. This is only one tree. But here we have probabilistic embedding into trees. So we have probabilistic embedding into trees. So in Fox 02, we had only one tree. Yes, it had a Steiner points, but it, everything was essentially one tree. In uh, S like 08, and here we had a Steiner points. You can actually show that if you don't have a Steiner point, it is very easy. If you consider a click even, you can say that you cannot uh, have a, essentially a tree that mimics it. So in some sense, the, uh, having a Steiner points here are necessary in this one tree. In the S like 08, we don't have any Steiner point, these are subtrees but we don't have one tree. We have essentially probabilistic embedding into a set of trees. And that's the thing that makes these two problems essentially uh, different. 
because one is just one tree, the other one is probabilistic embedding into a set of trees. Here we have a Steiner points. Now, what is another interesting thing? If you remember, we discussed in um, Bartal or FRT, he said that just for a cycle, if you remember, we mentioned that for cycle, you cannot embed it into one tree. However, and that was the reason that we consider probabilistic embedding into a set of trees for the first place. However, uh, and uh, here we can actually for cut problem, which are generally somewhat dual of the connectivity, but generally are harder. Interestingly, we can have actually only one tree. But uh, there was another interesting thing here. So here, uh, the, it, 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 essentially, so one may say, okay, we, when we consider this uh, cycle and try to embed it to a one tree, we are assuming that we are considering only a spanning trees or like maybe just the trees on the same node. What about Steiner points? That was the whole idea. <clears throat> this paper of <clears throat> Anupam Gupta shows that actually Steiner points does not help for distances. So uh, uh, essentially Steiner points uh, don't help for distances, but help for capacity. So Steiner points don't help for distances, as I mentioned, or like at least up to constant factor. But actually they help for uh, capacities such that we can, um, it. So this is like the one. So this for distances, they don't help, but they help for distance for capacities. So this is the overall thing essentially. So we had one tree for cut with some Steiner points, and as I mentioned, that's the way that we are mapping there. You can remove them, but you can get probabilistic embedding into trees. So when we remove this kind of Steiner points, then we have probabilistic embedding into trees. But this is some kind of very good things that for cut problem, we can have one tree, but for distances, we cannot have one tree. Here, in some sense, as I mentioned, Steiner points are necessary here for uh, this uh, cut, like three decomposition, or for cut problem. But uh, Steiner points does not help for distances, at, at least up to a constant fact. So that's the overall things that we are doing, and then we are just <clears throat> during this one, <clears throat> we just talked about this one tree versus several trees, and. Uh, Algorithmically, there is not much difference. There are some applications that one tree actually will be useful. I mean, there are some, but generally, if you have a set of trees as we have discussed for Bartal, not much difference because you essentially solve the problem on each of these trees separately, and then you will take the best and that will be a solution for the final six. <laughs> so uh, that's essentially the uh, things that uh, we are, uh, considering essentially for these uh, trees. And so because of that reason, whenever it is easier, it may be is easier again, when you want to solve the problem on trees, just consider this kind of spanning uh, version, spanning tree versions, and that would be easier. Then you don't have this extra Steiner points that you need to map it. Essentially, you can do everything there. You can also do it with the Steiner points, but it would be much easier if you don't do it with the Steiner points. And I mean, just do it essentially with the vertices of the graph. That would be actually uh, much uh, simpler things to do. Uh, good. So uh, now uh, having uh, said that, I think uh, now we have this, corresponding with this one. Uh, here, uh, let's go and talk more about it. And as I mentioned, 
this is very important that the capacity of each edge is some of the capacities of the edges that are going between these two partitions here. That's the main thing. And this one also is very necessary. Why? Because in the, this, in the, when we have this kind of uh, um, FRT, when you want to consider the distances between two vertices, of course, you can consider the distance if you consider a spanning tree, consider the distance between them there. And you know that that would be larger or equal to the distances in the original graph. However, when you consider a tree, then uh, and you will consider the cut problem. So you want to essentially embed it into a tree. So a tree itself, if the, the capacity of this edge is CE is equal to the capacity of the original edge graph, then if you want to cut essentially in this tree between, uh, so let me actually delete this one. Uh, um, let me just uh, delete uh, this. Uh, um, okay. So uh, this was uh, important that uh, this uh, capacity things that I have, uh, that I was uh, talking about actually was uh, super important. Uh, why? Because uh, if you consider a, if the graph G and there, if and this is a tree T. So in the tree, if the capacity of this edge is this C, is corresponding this we know that this is a subtree so it is there is an edge here and there is the capacity of this edge if the capacity was just ce <clears throat> and then if you delete uh, this edge in the tree then we will disconnect this part of the tree from this thing however in the original graph if you delete this edge then it doesn't mean anything because there might be other edges that are going from this part of the graph to this other part that's the reason that actually the capacity of this edge actually should be some of the capacities of the edges in the original graph and between these two vertices and not just the capacity of that edge. So that in some sense, that's also a very natural choice. Maybe at the beginning is not a natural choice. Now it is a natural choice. Now, what is the good thing? The good thing is that <clears throat> Whenever you want to, for example, disconnect this part of the graph from this part, you just cut this edge. <clears throat> this cut is not C of E, it's the sum of the, all these capacities. Now you know that if you delete this edge, in some sense, you will cut all these edges between these two partitions, all of them together, essentially. And that is a very good thing about this, because uh, then uh, you can actually cut the whole things and uh, not just the, uh, so you can essentially cut now the whole set of edges in the graph and not just one particular edge. So this is a very natural choice and it helps us. Now, a, another thing it, it is uh, interesting here is that you will consider any cut in this tree essentially, any cut, any set of edges that you will cut then you will go in the original graph and then you will just cut the corresponding cut because each edge here has a corresponding cut here. When you do cut all of them, of course you may repeat some uh, edges, but then you know that when you get some uh, essentially set of, uh, when you get uh, some set of partitions here, you will get the same set of partitions in the original graph. So in the original graph, always you can cut uh, and get the same set of partitions if you just cut the corresponding uh, uh, set of edges for each of these three edges. And again, each three edge is essentially corresponding to a cut in the original graph. Good. Now, uh, having uh, said that, so this is like the one that, uh, we have this about these uh, cut trees. And, uh, and here we just mentioned that because we are essentially because we are putting each edge capacity, some of these cuts, the, the actual uh, congestion in the original graph in the, this tree would be less than the original graph. Why? Because we are just putting more capacities here. And we are, uh, and this, why it is less than, why it can be less than, because somehow we are repeating some of these edges because this edge it may considered in this cut 
and also this age may be counted in this count. So one age actually may be counted in more than one, essentially. Uh, it may be uh, counted essentially in more than two ages in the tree. Good. OK, uh, so that's uh, about uh, these, these things. And uh, like uh, everything about the probabilistic embedding into trees works here for the cut problem. We are going actually in more details about this one. <laughs> but let me uh, raise everything here for now. Good. So uh, two things that we need to define here. Uh, so uh, like for each, uh, uh, so what is the load of a, a tree? Uh, good. So uh, what is the load of a, a tree here? <clears throat> So if you consider any edge in the tree, then the load of that is essentially is the, okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, the load T of, so uh, consider essentially uh, any multi-commodity flow on this graph. The, uh, and this uh, consider, uh, so this E, uh, this, this E is the sum vertices, sum vertex in the graph. So I want to see, what is the load T on E? So this is the tree T, this is the original graph T. I want to see what is the load of uh, this uh, tree T on this edge. So what do I do? I will say for any multi commodity uh, flow in general. Uh, so for any edge, uh, I mean, that you can actually do that. For any edge, uh, in the this the three T, so E T is here. So M E what M E has some corresponding path here. So this was correspond. So this uh, this via M E, we are mapping it to lose this path. If this E belongs to this edge, it may not belong to this path. If belongs to this path. Then I will add C of ET for this. So essentially, for and this is a natural choice, essentially, so that each edge here, each edge in the original graph, if the, uh, the path from this ET goes through this edge, I will just add the capacity of this edge in the tree. So C of ET, it will be added to this vertex, essentially. So that uh, the capacity of this edge uh, will be essentially considered toward the load E essentially. So here, load T of E. So for any edge, if there is some, uh, uh, for any edge in the tree T, if there is uh, some, uh, essentially the corresponding path goes through this E, I will add the capacity of this vertex to this. And what is the R load or relative load? Relative load is that just compute this absolute load and just divide it by C, just the capacity of this edge. So uh, this is the things that we are uh, defining here. So the load over capacity. Now, uh, uh, so this is for the one tree case. Let's see what will happen if like these are the several trees. Several subtrees. What will happen in this case? What is the load in this case? So, if you consider any edge in this tree, so each edge in this tree, E, has a corresponding edge in the original graph. So, the, because these are, this is a spanning subtree actually. So this is a spanning subtree. So anything here, T, in this is G, there is a corresponding thing here. So what's the meaning of the load in this case? So of course, then uh, like trivially, this edge, this is corresponding to here. 
So the path from this endpoint to this endpoint would be essentially the same endpoint. So in this case, when we have just one tree, the load would be just, so here was the CE, was the capacity of this edge on the tree. That would be the same. So the load here would be essentially just C uh, of E in the tree. So when we have just, uh, uh, so in the, in the original case that we have just one tree, that would be, uh, you need to compute the load, you need to consider for each edge of this tree and then see whether the path goes through these things and then sum it up to get the load. However, if these are just spanning subtrees, the load of each edge would be essentially just the same capacity of that edge. And the relative load would be essentially the load over the capacity of that edge. So that's essentially the, so this would be much simpler. So again, if you want to consider it much simpler, just go essentially as spanning trees. And again, some trees, some places that one tree helps, but generally you are fine with this one. Okay, so now what do we want to get it? So like the FRT, what did we want to say? In the FRT, we want to just make sure that the, uh, essentially the expected distance is at most ligand. So here, that is the corresponding things here. So you want to essentially minimize B such that for each edge in the graph, Ri uh, times R load, so, so this is lambda I. So lambda I is just probability distribution. So this is the probability distribution. So this uh, probability distribution, so lambda i is just probability distribution. So you want to make sure that this, uh, uh, so uh, this is essentially expected. So there we had, we were talking about expected distance. Here we are talking about expected R load. We want to make sure that the expected R load essentially is, uh, so, so Okay, so uh, and what was the R load? R load essentially is the load of these guys times the C of E. So you want to essentially show that, uh, so, and this beta is uh, this B, V is the some kind of this that minimizes this. So what do we, B essentially is the distortion. Uh, B here is corresponding to distortion. So you want to get something that lambda i times load of, uh, this is lambda i times uh, load of ti of e is less than or equal to B times C of e. And this is uh, sum over all lambda i. So this is exactly the same thing that we had it at for Bartok. Uh, so there, instead of this one, we had only the distances. And then here, so it, there we had the distances on the tree versus distances in the graph. Here, uh, and as I mentioned, the load here, the load of one edge, if we consider, for example, here, especially in this simpler case, the load is just the capacity of the cut between these two points. So you want to make sure that for each edge E, the load of this edge, uh, the probabilistic embedding, the, essentially the expected load of each edge is at most B times the capacity of this edge. So what you want here, the thing that you want is exactly this one. Uh, 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 the thing that uh, here you want is that the expected load of an edge, expected load of an edge is at most B times, this B is essentially corresponding to distortion of the uh, essentially the capacity on the edge. So in some sense, you want to have this, the expected, ca expected capacity of the, so this is essentially 
this is the if you say that this is the capacity of the age e in the graph in the treaty. So you want to have expected capacities and the capacities are go up because of this. You want to have expected capacity is at most better times the capacity of the vertex in the graph. And this is also important. So if one, if for one of these trees, this edge E, so, so here, this was also interesting thing. So if this edge E does not belong to this treaty, in this case, the load of this guy would be zero. So the load of this guy would be zero if this edge E does not belong to this tree T. And uh, that is the interesting thing here uh, that again, the, if the load is, uh, uh, so if it, it, so that we didn't had it before, but here in this case, we have it. So for each edge, you will consider it. You will consider it on these different trees. If this edge exists, because these are spanning trees, if this edge exists in some of these trees, so if this edge exists on that one, consider the capacities of those uh, essentially edges that you put it there. And then, and on different trees, you may have it actually different partition. So it might be the capacity might be different. So just you will consider the expected capacity on these ones. This is the expected, and you will just compare it with the capacity of this edge here, and you want to, and if it does not exist on this, that would be just zero. And you want to, this, this expected capacity, capacity is at most B times C of E, the original. So this is exactly the corresponding these things. And you can see the correspondence. That was exactly the reason that actually Baige uh, um, could get essentially this, corresponding and said that actually everything. So Racket Stock 2008 paper is but showing some kind of duality, but not complete duality. He said that, okay, you can use it, obtain it using Bartal. But then Feige showed that actually these are exactly the same thing. So this uh, Bartal trees and Racket trees, when you consider probabilistic embedding, these are exactly the same thing and you can get it from this. Good, so I will stop here and uh, Next time, I will talk a little bit more about this duality and then these applications of this. Now that we have these trees that you can embed it with this kind of low stretch or distortion, this beta, this beta would be log n essentially here. As so this beta would be log n, the same thing that we had it here. So this beta, this distortion, we had it log n, the same thing log n. So if you want to get a spanning trees, um, essentially, uh, then we get it, or tilde log n, if you remember before. If you want to just get trees, then you then you get log n, like essentially FRT. Exactly the same thing here in the duality. We will talk more about this duality next time. And then applications of this problem, uh, now this embedding tree for some cut problem, especially for bisection, as I mentioned. Before that, the, the solution that we had poly like for bisection was by five gate was super complicated. Then Racket uh, things. Uh, then uh, this was uh, this is actually solved uh, by Racket using this uh, probabilistic embedding into trees for cut problem that was in a stock paper. So in some sense, it shows very easy solution for this very hard solution that was there essentially before, and he could get essentially log in algorithm for bisection. So we will talk about this problem and what is the bisection so the bisection problem is that you are given a graph g and you want to divide it into exactly two parts so essentially n over two so you can say ceiling of uh, like a floor of n over two and ceiling of n over two exactly and if n is even essentially n over two such that the sum of these edges here are essentially so you want to partition in exactly two equal parts such that the sum of the edges in between is minimized. And this has a, a applications because this is, a, why it is important because if you can find some bisections, uh, then you can cut through this and then you can recurse. And the depth of the recursion would be log n if you can get this kind of uh, mean cut, if you can find the bisection. So bisection is a very important one for divide and conquer on graphs. 
And then using this algorithm, actually, you can see how you can get log n approximation for it. The previous algorithm was much, much more complicated by FIGA. So we will talk about this one and a little bit more about this duality between uh, this, uh, I mean, how FIGA showed this one. We talk a little bit more uh, next time. And uh, yeah, that would be the things I will stop here.